G'day guys. Today we're going to have a quick look at the Xeon E5620 processor and overclocking. Uh, this is one of the cheapest Xeon processors for the X58 platform, which is the socket 1366. It has a frequency of 2.4 gig as the base. Um, with a turbo of 2.66 gigahertz. Now it's got four cores and um, eight threads and the good thing about this processor is it's 12 meg cache. Um, so it's basically like the big brother like a like a i7 980, 980X or a 990X just uh, two cores less and two threads less. And anyway it's got um, a TDP of 80 watts which is actually very good for overclocking. So yeah like I said um, these can be had for as little as three dollars through to around six to ten dollars. Um, yeah if you shop around you can probably get them a bit cheaper but you can't really complain for a three or four dollar processor and the motherboard we're using today is going to be the X58A UD3 um, with the latest BIOS from the manufacturer's website. So let's get this uh, sucker overclocked and see what we can do. Okay, so straight into Intelligent Tweaker, uh, Advanced Frequency Settings. Clock ratio is the maximum 19, which is the turbo multiplier. Uh, we enable the states to keep the process running a bit cooler in Windows and enable the frequency BC LK and we'll crack that straight to, uh, I don't know, we'll see maybe 220 or 216 should be alright. That'll take us to 4.1 gigahertz. Now, the multi, we just dropped that onto the lowest because I think we're using 1333 DDR3 at the moment. So, a lowest, lowest, lowest multiplier will um, take that to 1270, oh, nearly 1300 megahertz. That'll, that'll do. And that'll keep our CPU, CPU frequency at um, 4.1 gig. double checking in there. Now the voltages LLC obviously to the maximum because we don't want any V droop and we'll s the CPU V code 1.375 we'll try that to start with and set our default boot drive and disable full screen logo and a HCI obviously. Now this particular motherboard doesn't particularly like to save our selected boot device the first go. Um, that happens with a, a few gigabyte motherboards as I mentioned in my previous video. Um, they just don't like to save the default boot drive the first time around so we normally have to go in and set that again. Alright so here we are booted up at 4.1 gigahertz uh, which is pretty good for the E5620. And now we just have to make sure our boot device was saved, which I highly doubt. Boom, there we go. So we'll just restart that and go back into the BIOS and um, make sure that's set correctly. All right, as you can see, here it didn't save our SSD as our, our first boot device, so we'll just reset that and um, quickly check the temps and uh, reboot and uh, pray again and hope that we can boot into Windows.
Well, we made it to Windows, so that's a good sign. Um, now we can uh, just do some um, stress testing. Uh, we'll check the temps with the real temp first. Um, make sure they're not not too high, and uh, crack open CPU Z. Make sure that the uh, speed and uh, like the V core values are all correct, which they they look pretty good to me. And uh, on to some stress testing. All right, here we have uh, just Prime um, to start with. I usually like to give it about roughly 30 minutes or so. I mean, that's that's plenty for gaming. I mean, you're not gonna, really going to see those sort of um, CPU usage, CPU usage maxing out that much in in almost any game. But yeah, I like to do 30 minutes just to be sure. I mean, that should that should well and truly enough for any 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 standard Windows time. So yeah, there you go, guys. Um, thanks for watching my video, and um, I'll see you again in the next one.